All right, so this video is part of chapter 10. Uh, it'll cover the concept of a star path. For this chapter, you should have four facts, uh, no specific vocabulary, but I've summarized it. Okay, first thing, some vocabulary. The word do, D-U-E, is uh, replaceable as synonymous with the word exact. So when they talk about directions, north, south, east, and west, you'll typically see it uh, written as due east. And what's meant by that is that it is exactly to the east. So here we have an experiment we did in class where there's a flashlight here, right, and a flashlight here, and the camera is pointed uh, at, the light, at the lights, and then the camera is slowly moved over the course of several seconds. The picture was taken, and the end result is that the flashlight draws a line of light across the room. Now, nothing was moving besides the camera, and that's similar to the effect you see uh, when you take pictures of stars. So here's a picture of a star. The star is not moving, um, but the camera is because the camera is on the Earth, right? These are called star trails. And if you measure the, the length of a star trail, you can convert that to an angle. So you need a center point. The center point for star trails is always going to be here at the North Star. This is Polaris. Polaris is in the center of these circles, so you know you are looking directly to the north, due north. Right? You also should remember that the angle from Polaris back into the ground is equal to the observer's latitude. So you can calculate a lot of things from a photograph such as this. Today we're going to focus on one thing. If the angle created is 22 degrees. We need to figure out how many hours, how long this picture was. And if you remember from the previous section here, the Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. So 22 degrees divided by 15 degrees every hour gives us an answer somewhere around one um, and a half, I round it off, degrees, sorry, one and a half, one and a half hours. So this picture was taken over the course of about one and a half hours. Here we have another one. Now with 40 degrees, and if you have a calculator with you, you would do 40 degrees, and you divide by 15 degrees every hour, and you get an answer of just under three hours. Two hours and maybe uh, 45 minutes if you're rounding. Here's some more um, practice. I, I put the protractor up here. In class, we had looked at even more and more examples of this idea. Okay. So when you're looking to the north, what you're looking at are circles. As you are looking above the north pole okay, on our round planet, you're seeing these kind of circular shapes, and that, tr that shows you that you are looking directly to the north. Now, the second rule is this. These star lines, whenever you see them, they're always moving, they're always moving to the right of the image. So if it's if it's moving to the right, in order to get from here to here, which is moving to the right, in this case moving to the right and up, we know that we're looking to the east, right? You should know that the sun rises in the east, stars rise in the east. Stars rising. Here's an example of a star that is rising from here to here. The next thing you should notice is that the length of all these lines are the same. I think what you see here is more than one combined. They're all the same because there's only one object that's moving in these images, and that is the Earth. The Earth is the only thing that is moving. The stars are not. So if in the east here they are moving up to the right, what would we expect to see if we looked to the west? We would expect to see them moving down to the right. So they're still moving to the right, right? It moved from here to there. In this case, it had to move down to the right. So we know that objects in the sky, such as the sun and the moon, they set in the west. So these stars are setting in the west. We know we're looking to the west. 
Now the south, um, depending on how high above the horizon you look, you'll see a whole bunch of different things. Uh, usually they'll look kind of like curves. Right? The higher up you look, the more the more flat they look, and eventually if you look high enough, they'll even have a kind of curve in the opposite direction. Now, if you're looking um, at the, if you're at a new location, right, if you're at the equator, things look very interesting. Polaris sits on the horizon because you're at zero degrees latitude, right, which you've learned 300 times, which means the angle to Polaris is equal to zero. When you look directly to the east at the equator, the stars will appear to rise straight up. The sun would appear to rise straight up. So in the morning, that sun's going to rise, and that sun's going to move directly straight up overhead. So the angle to Polaris, right, which is this angle here, the angle to Polaris is going to be equal to the observer's latitude. So if you see here, 0, 10, 20, 30, 42, so if this number here is 42 degrees, you know that the latitude of this observer equals 42 degrees north. We know that the sun is going to rise in the east, right, shown by the arrows, reach its highest point in the day here, and then sink down to the west. So here's some facts. You can pause this if you want to read through them uh, very quickly. It says that the fact one says the direction the camera is pointing. Uh, these are the facts you should be able to determine from one of these pictures. You should be able to figure out the direction the camera is pointing, you should be able to estimate the latitude of the observer, and you should be able to figure out the duration, how long the picture took to, to capture. So overall, you should know the Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. Super fact. North, uh, if you're looking north, the trails go in circles. If you're looking to the east, they go up to the right. And if you're looking to the west, they go down to the right. That's what you should know about the path of stars.